What's up, Zach here, and today I've got the all new On Cloud Monster 2. And from the V1, some pretty interesting upgrades to them. They're really subtle, but they do make the shoe feel a lot different once you actually start getting them up to speed. Let's get into it. And thank you to On Running for sending me a pair of the Cloud Monster V2 to check out. However, this video is by no means sponsored and all opinions, good, bad, and indifferent, are all my own. Now the uppers of the Cloud Monster 2 are pretty similar to the originals. It's that paneled mesh mixed with that real micro TPU mesh. It is very light, but the tongue in these things has a pretty aggressive gusset. There's actually a lot of material underneath that top layer of upper. Now the lace line is an external rope lace eyelet system. It does does give you a runner's knot. The tongue is pretty thin and porous, so if you're cranking on that runner's knot, you are gonna get a little bit of irritation in there before the shoe breaks in. You can just put a piece of moleskin under there and it really takes care of it. But speaking of that tongue and forefoot, if you look at the breathability test on these things, they heated up 118.8 degrees. And you know, if you look at the breathability mapping of them, it did hold on to some of that fog in there. The thing is, is the materials in these are so light, but also a little bit stronger than some other more maximalist or super shoes out there. So you might be sacrificing a few degrees of breathability for a little bit more of a maximalist lockdown in these, but because they are so light, is it really gonna matter if you're sweating or heating them up so much? Because in reality, the top layer, the uppers, the tongue and the gusset, the materials on them are just so light that I don't think they're gonna be able to hold on to a lot of heat and moisture anyway. So to me, these really straddle the line of feeling like more of a super shoe in terms of light uppers, but also giving you just a little bit more lockdown and security than some other shoes in its class. And on the upper durability test, 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, yeah, I mean, the burr does start to work through these. However, you know, these are road running shoes and really the strength in these uppers is its resistance to blunt trauma and it working together to create a little bit more containment around your entire foot and to create almost like a Gibney boot around your foot. I did notice with these with the runner's knot heel slippage, really only mild to moderate. I thought the heel slippage was better in the twos versus the ones. Remember, it is more of a minimalist heel counter road running shoe, so you are gonna get a little bit of play there, but as long as you have a runner's knot in there and break them in adequately, you should be just fine. All right, now getting into the midsole and the teardown though, this is where I see the biggest material change from the V1 to the V2. And that biggest change to me comes in the fact that there is a super dense slab of foam between you and the speed board. Now you still do have a traditional strobel on this, however, right underneath the strobel board is a pretty dense full length foam, which is actually more dense than the Helion underneath of it. So you do have a dual density, typical in those dual density foams, the spongier, softer foam is on top, whereas in on, they put the denser foam on top, I think, to protect your heel from the speed board. Now, speaking of that speed board, that speed board only goes to your metatarsal heads versus on a lot of other on shoes, specifically the Cloud Monster V1, it goes full length. Now, I like this in particular because in the forefoot, you're actually getting a little more forgiveness. And it, in my mind, that's where I felt a lot more of the forgiveness in these. I was wondering why my heel wasn't feeling hard plastic on this, because I knew the speed board at least went back into the heel. And that's because there is just a super dense foam right underneath of your foot there. And the other thing I noticed is from the V1 to the V2, the Cloud Tech pods and the Helion foam that goes around there, just a little bit more spongy, a little bit softer versus on the V1. Now remember, you can't make the Cloud Tech pods, you can't make that Helion foam too soft, or those pods are just gonna compress into oblivion. Something has to hold them up. But remember, versus some on shoes where you can actually see the speed board in the middle of the shoe, it's hollowed out, so they really have to be strong. This is a continuous midsole, right? So you can make the foam a little bit softer and still have enough density to hold those Cloud Tech pods up, even though you can see through the shoe, there's just a lot more room to inject more foam into a shoe that doesn't have the entire middle of it cut out. Now, if you look at the bounce height test on this, only got 26 centimeters in the heel and then 30 in the forefoot. And to me, that the reason the forefoot got a little better is because the speed board's not there. Remember that speed board, that's a liquid injected thermoplastic, which is basically a PEBA type foam, a plastic substitute. Now there are a lot more elastomers in this type of plastic substitute. However, you're not gonna catch that on a bounce height test, right? That's more for when the shoe is compressing. And that's really where these shoes do their best. And we'll talk about that when we get to the speed ratio of these, but suffice to say, 
really, I wasn't surprised at what I saw in the bounce height test because number one, I expected it to be hitting, you know, hard plastic, but that foam over top of the speed board is mainly meant so that your foot doesn't feel the speed board and that's gonna be much more of a shock dampening, shock absorbing type sensation versus some other shoes where it's like Zoom X foam or Pebex type foam where you're getting the crazy launch. And looking at the outsole tread of the Cloud Monster V2, it, it's nearly identical to the V1, except for the fact that the tread insert and the forefoot is all connected, uh, but it is still that pretty flat cobblestone type pattern on the grip test ramp. Slips at 43 degrees, which you know you would expect because this serrated foam is actually contacting that cement, as well as this pretty flat tread from on. You know, with, with this, it's mainly meant for ease of glide, ease of stride, I should say. Now, if you look at this on the speed ratio, only comes in at a 2.47, however, shank score of 0.4 brings it up to a 2.87. And honestly, even though these are fast shoes, I do think that a 2.87 is where these really lie. I think that's a pretty accurate representation because the Cloud Monster, as well as a lot of other on shoes, are really dependent on your stride, your stride length, how you hit the ground, and mainly what is your mid stance look like. So we'll talk about that in the runnability section. I, I will say though, these are incredibly fast shoes for the right runner, and they're incredibly, I'd say average shoes for some other runners, which we'll talk about when we get to the runnability. But if you look at the outsole durability test though, 10 seconds highest grid sandpaper, yeah, I mean, Really, maybe a millimeter of damage on this. The durometer is actually really high. Remember, this is very thin, light rubber, so they make it pretty hard, right? And they make it pretty flat, so it lasts a pretty long time. I've noticed with all the on shoes that I've had for a pretty long time, the tread does last fine. It's just that it is meant for road running, right? You're not gonna be able to take this on very slick, like rocks through a creek or something, right? Like I wouldn't try to take this trail running but for what they are trying to get easy glide and, and, and lower braking forces on asphalt, cement, concrete, things like that. I think this does fantastic. And I think it is a, a really perfect combination of enough grip, but also enough forgiveness to get from stride to stride. Cause remember we talked about in the grip test ramp, we're doing some other shoes. You do not want too high of a grip, right? You don't want too high of a coefficient of friction or it's gonna destroy your patellar tendon. It's gonna destroy a lot of other things. So I do think that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Now the fit of the Cloud Monsters is a little bit more forgiving than I thought they would be. It is still paneled mesh, but pretty standard length. And then the width is just a little, you know, hair on the forgiving side. I think a narrow medium foot just go true to size. Even a 2E for me, I'd probably try to break these in true to size unless you have a bunion or Taylor's bunion. Just because number one, you get the weight reduction for a little bit of an easier stride. But number two, because of the midsole geometry, when you come down in stance and especially right after propulsion in the first phase of swing, you want to be one to one in these because that's what's going to give you the best kick on these, getting your foot, especially your metatarsal heads, one to one. But when talking about the snake bitten foot, you know, any lumps, bumps, bruises, anything like that, things that are nagging you on the bottom of your foot, in terms of ball of foot pain, these are just infinitely better than the Cloud Monster V1. I mean, it's not even the same shoe, you're not even playing the same sport. So th that has been an incredible leap forward from the V1 to the V2. In terms of heel pain, initially they're fine. I think once that foam starts to bottom though, especially if you're a heel striker or midfoot striker, you're gonna start to notice that speed board over time. I think if you put a low profile orthotic in these because of the lockdown in these, it is a little bit better versus the V1, I think. You can get a lower profile orthotic, and I think that negates some of the heel issues once that top loaded foam starts to bottom. And I think if you can find a low profile orthotic for these, that really covers most of your bases because in the forefoot, it's just very forgiving because of the density of the foams on there. I do think with a low profile orthotic, these do kind of get up into that good for territory. And when they are new, they're pretty good for just about everything. It's just that if you're a four foot striker on these, I think then you're probably good just from the jump and you're fine getting into the midfoot, proximal midfoot and heel. I think, like I said, with the orthotic, I think that bumps these up to pretty good for most things. But getting into the all important runnability and which runners these are best for. Now, number one, you know, the Cloud Monsters do have a little bit of a four foot rocker, right? The thing with that is I found that having a four foot striking gait, you really had to get used to it, right? I mean, if you're used to the Cloud Monster, the V1, you probably get used to this pretty quick too. It's just that some people I know have a little bit of issues with it because 
you gotta hit it at the right spot. You really gotta kinda tune your gait to hit these at the right spot for a forefoot striker. The thing is though, with the medial flange though, in the forefoot, you know, I mean, they're, they're stable enough in the forefoot and you do get a, a decent amount of kick with them. And to me, a midfoot striker on these is okay, but it's really heel strikers and forefoot strikers that do best things. I know that, that that's really weird and I know forefoot strikers are gonna roll their eyes at me, but with the speed board plus the cloud tech pods, these do best when you're giving these a full stride, which means that you are loading that speed board and all those cloud tech pods through an entire gate cycle because you're giving it all that potential energy and it's turning it into all that kinetic energy. I found, and that's why I always say with a lot of these on shoes, they do so well climbing hills, right? Because when you're climbing those hills, that kickback action, these, you can really feel it. It's almost propelling you forward. It's a really unique sensation. Now, for people that have a very up and down or almost marching running gait, right? These, you're really just not gonna feel any of the benefits, right? Because you do need a little bit of a reach on these to get these to kind of kick into action and get that kicking action in there. So if you are somebody with pretty short strides, pretty up and down, you know, marching type strides, I mean, they're fine. It's just that you're not gonna get the benefits of these. If you're somebody that does have a little bit more reach out there, right? And you are someone who does get their leg a little bit further out and have that nice rolling action to your gait, have a pretty fluid, complete stride. That's when you're really gonna notice the insane propulsion of these, much like the V1, it's just in the V2, it's a little bit more comfortable. Your foot kind of sinks into that more dense foam. You're not getting a lot of the rocking, right? These, these do kind of stay a little bit more centered, a little bit more stable than the V1. All these upgrades look subtle from the outside, but it's when you actually start running in them, it's when you actually start using them for a while that you notice just how much more finely tuned the V2s are. So it's still not the most plus shoe on the planet, right? It's not the Cloud Surfer, it's not the Invincible Run 3, but if you need a shoe that gives you quite a bit of kick and is a shoe that if you have a really strong push off and backswing is gonna give you a ton of propulsion, plus a shoe that's very easy to get up and down a hill with if you're running on those types of circuits, then I think, once again, these are one of the best shoes out there. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Cloud Monsters. Are you going with them? Are you picking up discounted pairs of the V1s or going with something else completely? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you wanna see another sibling to the On Cloud Monster V2, what I think is the most forgiving and plush on shoe on the market, the Cloud Surfer going to the knife, make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam. I'll see you somewhere in the sneakerverse.